This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I'll be speaking with the company Illumio. I'm sitting down right now with Matthew Glenn, who is going to show us a demo of the Illumio Adaptive Security Platform. Take it away. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to dive through the demo, and you can feel free to interrupt me and say, what the heck is that? <laughs> okay. Or whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to log into our web console. But before I do, I just want to say everything I'm going to do in this demo actually is driving our REST API. So okay. different customers, you know, some of them use the web console. Some don't even use it at all. Mm. Uh, but I think it's sort of to illustrate the power of it. It's fun to show the graphics. So let's do it that way. Okay. That's cool. Sounds good. All cool. right. So I'm going to log in. And this could be configured via SAML. So we could use, like, a third-party app. IDP, you don't have to use us to log in. That's you know pretty standard stuff. Mm -hmm. So you could use two-factor authentication. So we're going to log in right now. Hopefully, if I have the right password here, um, and we'll see what goes on here. There we go. Nice. Um, so we're logging in, and uh, I'm going to sort of stress. When we do this, we actually serve micro segmentation. Uh, when people think about it, they're thinking about, oh, this is for protecting my applications. But ultimately, the product serves the needs mm -hmm. of a bunch of different people inside of our company. So I'm going to do the demo and talk about the different people that it actually serves. Because okay. I think it's sort of be a little bit myopic to think that, oh, this is just for protecting applications. True, yes. So um, right now, we're looking at uh, what we call a location uh, level view of Illumio. Um, each one of these bubbles mm -hmm. represents one physical location that uh, an organization might be running out of. Um, this is like where ops teams usually start with the product. So um, once again, you know, this doesn't serve just one uh, team inside of a company. Mm -hmm. There's many or, uh, constituents that tend to want to interact with the product. Got so it. you can almost imagine this is sort of like Google Maps. Instead of looking okay. at the street view, we'll get down to the street view in a minute, mm -hmm. um, we're looking at sort of like a state level view, like the western okay. part of the United States or the eastern part or whatever. Mm -hmm. But these are like the locations where people have uh, assets. Um, and uh, for my little demo, you can see each one of these groups here represents one application instance. Huh. So what I just did is I clicked on that California data center, and what we've effectively done is almost ripped the roof off inside that data center. And each one of these bubbles represents one application instance, mm. and you're merely going to see if there's some tra this line, and that indicates there's traffic going from this ordering application to this point of sale application. Okay. okay? But Let's drill down and sort of get some interesting views of this. So right now, um, we're uh, this. I just drilled down, and now we're getting to the street view. Okay, so okay, um, this is one application inside that California data center. It's the ordering application in the production environment in California. Mm. Okay, um, these are uh, driven from metadata that we get from the, the the customer. It could be from a CMDB, it could be from orchestration, okay. it could be from tags, it could be from any number of places. But it allows us to use natural language to sort of describe the application. Um, a quick couple of notes here. Um, we're looking at what we call the reported view. Mm -hmm. The reported view shows the actual policy that's in place and the traffic. There's also something we call draft view. What draft view is the policy that might be provisioned next. Okay. okay. So um, let's, now I'm going to get you a little bit more oriented. So let's, you're going to see there's green lines and red lines. Mm -hmm. A green line indicates that we've detected traffic. Okay. So remember, we're detecting all the traffic yep. uh, and you've written a policy that would allow it. A red line indicates that we've detected traffic and you've not, and the organization's not yet written a policy policy that would allow that traffic, okay? okay? Now, um, so once again, we're just, all we're doing is we're sitting by passively and collecting the traffic. We're not even enforcing anything yet, mm -hmm. okay? Which is an important point. Um, when organizations are thinking about doing micro-segmentation, um, there's what I call the firewall rule, you know, provision and prey problem, mm -hmm. where someone writes a firewall rule, then they hope it doesn't break an application. Right. So we walk our customers through a, a series of steps that allow them to get to better protection. Okay. Um, and we call that illumination, as I talked about. And what we allow them to do is to set different states for the individual workloads or individual applications. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could be in what we call build mode. In a build mode, we're just going to sit by and collect the traffic. Okay. And we're going to overlay the policy, exactly what I've been showing you right now. When an organization feels like they're ready to, 
they can migrate that application to what we call test mode. And in test mode, we're going to write all the rules down to the host, but the last rule is permit any any log alert. Okay? okay. So if something hits that last rule, um, one of two, one of a few things has happened. Either one, they forgot to write a rule, mm -hmm. but, so you'll get an alert that said, "Hey, you need to add another rule to this ordering application." Okay. Um, it could be that there's a job that only happens once a once a year, once a month. Yeah. So you're still not going to break the application. Or the third thing is maybe there's an APT, mm. and uh, you didn't want to go to enforcement, but at least you have a sensor out there that's going to detect when something's going wrong. Okay. Okay. Yep. So even if, once you get to this test mode, a, a company's way more responsive to anything that's going wrong inside of their environment, mm -hmm. okay? And then when they're ready to, they can move to what we call enforced state. I want to okay. contrast this. So this, because we're enforcing at the host, um, you can enforce this on a workload by workload basis, an application by application basis, or even okay. an environmental basis. Why is that important? Different organizations can move through the process to getting to enforcement at their own speed. Uh, you don't have to say, everybody has to be in enforcement at once. Right. Everybody goes at their own speed, okay? okay? Nice. So um, you sort of have a little bit of an orientation Every one of these little uh, vertices right here represents a workload. Um, when I uh, we get, when the vent is installed, that virtual enforcement node, which is the antenna mm -hmm. that's installed inside the host, it doesn't do any enforcement as I as we talked about before. Mm -hmm. It's just going to send context and telemetry up to the policy compute engine. It's going to tell us um, information about that host, where it's running. It also tells us what processes are running oh, wow. on that host. Okay, so we're getting information about what's happening inside of that host. Um, so that's sort of a quick orientation, but this is for one individual data center um, and this one little application. But this is sort of cute in that, you know, all sitting inside yeah. California. Mm -hmm. That's not what we'd usually see. We usually see something that looks a little bit more like this. This is huh. um, the point of sale application. And this point of sale application is uh, not sitting in one data center. It's sitting across multiple data centers. Right. Okay. And... Uh, and what we're looking at here is this one point of sale application isn't just sitting inside California. You can see that it's sitting inside of Nevada, it's sitting inside of Texas, mm -hmm. Virginia, et cetera. So th this view, this operations view that I talked about earlier, is probably the wrong way to approach it. Mm -hmm. you need, we need to look at how this application actually runs across a very geographically distributed um, uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change my view. Instead of to the operations view, I'm going to show you the uh, application owner view. Oh, wow. So what we're now looking at is that exact same application, mm -hmm. but rather than how it sits inside of that one California data center, this is the, how the app team actually thinks about their application. Okay. This one itself, I think, has 35 individual workloads. There's 430 individual connections that comprise this application sitting across five different data centers. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a super distributed uh, application. Why do we see core organizations doing this? So um, let's imagine that this uh, company is, you know, uh, FUBAR Enterprises, right? Okay, or FU yeah. Enterprises. And mm -hmm. so they're worried about the, like, their application being running no matter what happens. Um, and so what they do is they put their application across multiple data centers in order to, uh, if like, you know, if the WeHawk data center goes out in New Jersey because of some bad event, it's the application is still going to run. The yeah. consumers don't uh -huh. have to be impacted by it. Nice. And so this view gives them a good view of how the application actually runs. I'd like to pause for a second. Yeah. Okay, so this is the app group map, and I know that before my my battery low thing was up there, <laughs> so we had to pause for a second. Yep. Um, um, anyway, so um, what I did was actually uh, while I was waiting, getting my chargers, I actually unprovisioned some of the rules so we could sort of walk through how okay. we would actually write the rules. So cool. imagine that you're the owner of this point of sale application. Via our back, I could basically say, you know, you're now the owner of this application. You could actually use this tool. Mm -hmm. The thing that we really wanted to do when we were making the product is an app team doesn't have to have a PhD in security to write policy with Illumio. Mm -hmm. We're sort of going to demystify that process. So an app team could look at their individual workloads and show like that information that I showed you shortly earlier about mm -hmm. what's running. Um, oops, I'm sorry about that. Um, they can look at the actual traffic. So if I click on any one of these red lines, mm -hmm. I get information about this host is talking to this host. Yeah. Um, this is the port and protocol it's talking on. They can sort of say, all this looks right. The question is, you know, before I was talking about red lines and green lines, how do you make those red lines turn green? Right. Okay. So what we did is we built something called Policy Generator, which is like an expert system uh, that basically learns the connectivity pattern mm -hmm. and then recommends uh, 
micro segmentation policy. So I'm going to start doing it, um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to run I'm going to run through this. And we're going to start with within the actual application. Um, we're going to create policies for it. So I'll start with the interest scope rules, and hopefully you guys are seeing this. What's going in the background is a policy computer that looked at all the traffic, uh-huh. looked at all the ports that were open on the host, and it's going to basically allow you to select different micro segmentation strategies. So okay. um, it'll literally suggest, hey, I want to put everything inside of a big bubble, mm-hmm. and you'll see how many connections and flows are actually governed by the rule. If I select, I can select tier-based segmentation, and you'll notice uh-huh. as I select this, different policies are suggested here. Yep. The cool thing about this, is it's going to cover all those red lines, those 430 plus flows, but you don't really have to know that much about security to make it happen, okay? Nice. okay. Um, so a user can select you know, the tightest segmentation possible. Mm-hmm. Now, if, you ha- if, a, if an app team didn't feel comfortable with a policy, like let's imagine that you were like, hey, I know about these, this, this processing tier to database connection. I know about the database synchronization. This one I'm not so sure about. Mm-hmm. You can choose to exclude it, right? Wow. And you'll notice up here that your rule coverage actually changes, okay. right? When a, uh, when a team feels like they're comfortable, they hit next and they save it. And if we go back to huh. our app group map, you're going to notice that what I just did was wow. all made all those red lines turn green. Yes. But what's interesting about this is um, we haven't provisioned the policy yet. So I can say, Marley, you're allowed to write policy, but I'm allowed to only provision it, right? Uh-huh. So, yep, yep. Um, so I can basically separate the idea of policy creation from policy approval. And that way you don't have to have a centralized team writing all the policies. What we see large organizations with thousands of uh, applications do mm-hmm. is putting the policy creation down to their teams and then policy approval to their central organizations, okay? Sense, yeah. um, now, the last thing I'd like to show you, just to sort of respect your time, because mm-hmm. I can keep going all yeah. long, is uh, something I'll call Traffic Explorer. Traffic Explorer is basically a natural language traffic query engine, okay? okay. So um, let's imagine you just want to ask a question, like, hey, I want to know about all the traffic going into my point of sale application. Okay. You'll notice I'm not asking you, like, what is the IP address of the point of sale application? Right. Nothing specific. You, you just, it's like a natural language yeah. traffic query engine. So I'm going to run that query right now. And what's going to happen is the PC, that brain I was going to talk about, is going to present the information in a few different ways, okay? okay. Okay. The first way, which I'll show you, is a tabular view. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. The tabular view is sort of like the Geekorama view, mm-hmm. um, and you can sort of pass this off to an auditor. So let's imagine you're a security practitioner, and someone's coming to your P- they, the PCI police are coming in, mm-hmm. and you need to show them all of your PCI audit information. You could basically, I could whip that one out for you. It's like, show me all the traffic going in my uh, PCI environment, mm-hmm. and we can run that wow. query, and you pass that off to your, uh, you, tr- you pass that off to the traffic, uh, the PCI police, mm-hmm. and you say, you drop the mic, walk out the door. Here's what you're showing. It's showing whether that traffic is actually allowed by policy, okay. which is important for PCI. It's showing you what the host name that actually initiated the connection, what the IP address was, a little bit of context. Like, this is a web workload for the point of sale application mm-hmm. in the PCI environment in New York, who it was talking to, what port and protocol it was talking to, uh, how many times it happened, wow. and when it was first detected. Wow, and you okay. could pass that as off to your auditor and walk out the door in your pretty good position. Nice. There's another thing that it does. So what we see a lot of time is um, customers that don't really know what they're looking for. Mm. So um, we had a customer that wanted to know <coughs> excuse me, about all the traffic between development and production. Okay. They didn't know what they were looking for. They just wanted to, sort of wanted to see what, it, what was happening. And we have this way that we look at it called Explore. It's not Explore because you have to know what you're looking for, mm-hmm. it's, it's called Explorer because it allows you to explore your traffic. So what we're looking okay. at right now is a parallel coordinate map. Um, this basically shows you who is initiating connections, and I put my PCI environment in the middle of it, and here's all the ports that are available in my PCI environment. Okay. So gotcha. I can actually drill down and look at what's actually talking in here, mm-hmm. so I can find stuff that I just didn't know that I was looking for before, oh, okay? Wow. So that's a, just a natural language traffic query engine, and once again, this is all just driving the REST API that mm-hmm. we have built into the product. There's a bunch of other uh, demos we could do for you, but I, uh, as with respect to your time, I think that's sort of a, a good place to this stop. This was great. No, awesome. Thank you so much for showing me this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. All righty. And that's all the time that we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online.
Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.